feel as, as if we were from another planet, you know, people do not understand ourselves very well. And it takes significant effort not only to explain why are we holding the beliefs, what we are holding, but it takes also significant effort from those who were socialized in the old approach to mental health to open their minds and listen to us. There's people who talked of, understood their distress in terms of it's a mental illness model. There are people who completely believe that it's not an illness, it is a socially created, it's a socially constructed thing. And there are other people who understood it as a spiritual breakthrough. I came out of psychiatry, I escaped from psychiatry. Um, and it took a while, I had to decolonize my mind because I was completely colonized in my way of thinking. A lot of people are now taking a more rights-based approach, so where people are looking for an avenue to begin to think, how, how else can we begin to break down the system that doesn't work? What I feel is this, the Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities have made a huge impact in the way both civil society and governments are related to persons with disabilities, including persons with psychosocial disabilities. I think there is more awareness about the need to respect the rights of people with disabilities, though, which is still missing, is changing in policies in relation to mental health services. But the good thing is, several of them, several of the leaders of the peer support groups online have started to um, acknowledge the, the promise, the potential of the human rights and disability perspective um, in terms of establishing our identity as a sector because you'd see the shift slowly in the sector from I'm a mentally ill, I'm a bipolar, to I'm a person with psychosocial disability. So that, that's a huge um, uh, shift. that's really this disease model. So we've lived with it longer than you have. And it has fallen apart in the US, okay? So for example, the chemical imbalance narrative. Everybody agrees it didn't happen. Uh, did they really find the biology of the disorders? They say, no, it didn't happen. How about outcomes with the drugs? They're poor. So actually that scientific narrative in the United States is really starting to fall apart. It is very uh, medical model, extreme medical model, because uh, after um, the mental health system uh, by Mental Health Act uh, in uh, 1997, uh, the mental health hospital bed uh, grew rapidly from 20,000 to 80,000 now, and the length of stay of the persons with mental illness is more than 247 days average. Uh, so uh, our mental health system is not for the persons with psychosocial disabilities, but for the professional mental health workers or psychiatrists. The government is spending huge money, huge budget, only for the hospitalization. So we need uh, the way uh, out from this kind of uh, making person uh, deteriorate. So you're at a different point in this cycle. You're still believing in the narrative and it's still being talked about to your politicians. It's still governing care. It's, it's odd because we invented it, but we exported it later and it's actually stronger now in other countries.
We started out as a mental health project, but then we realized that uh, it's not the right way to go about it and we really need to ask the question, which is inspired by the CRPD, um, how do you include someone with a disability within communities? So, um, and it really changed our perspective. I think it's, it's more than alternatives. It's, it's, they are uh, fun, foundational aspects of participation in society. As a person may need, as a person uh, with, imagine, uh, 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 as a person uh, a, a wheelchair uses, may need in some cases a personal assistant. Person with psychosocial disabilities may need support for decision making, may need support to living independently in the community, may need support in types of respite services. But this is not part of the mainstream discourse. And that's something that we need to put, because if we want to achieve inclusion, we need to also put attention of the diversity of needs of people. And at the end, everybody needs support. All of us need support to participate in society. Although f CRPD is about uh, the rights of people with disabilities, it's an it's overarching worldview. It's about people's rights. So a lot of people are beginning to think, actually, this is not. This is something much wider. This is how societies have been able to evolve. and I met some other people who talked about the hearing voices and I'd actually planned to commit suicide. Um, yeah, uh, because I thought I cannot live this life. But when I heard some people saying, if you take these glasses on your, uh, put these glasses on, sort of virtual ones, or if you like, uh, and look at things from this angle, uh, and you see that your voices and the symptoms and things are not an illness, but are meaningful, and that meaning can be created and placed in a context and that set me free. I really remember thinking, oh my God, if I do, if that's right, then I can live, yeah. In the last three or four years, I work within Family Constellations. Uh, it's a form of engagement where we, we look at full communities, including their ancestors. And this has led us to, I suppose, to, 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 to examine trauma as a systemic thing and as an individual thing. So a lot of my work now is working with trauma as a way of understanding the way people live their lives. For me, hearing voices, seeing visions, etc. is who I am. I call it slipping into non-consensus reality every now and then. So for me, there is no recovery. It's just the way I am. What has helped, what, what I have explored and been actively trying to find is ways to live with it. So I've gone through, you know, medication and all the rest of it, but it is when you get to a point where you have some kind of mechanisms with which to live. So when I when I get into that mode, I still kind of continue. So I will never say I have recovered because I still have those visions and voices and I think it will continue happening until I die. So it's just part of who I am. I started thinking, you know, maybe there's something more I can do rather than just treating people perhaps I can do other things like I can make um, other support services in the community so I then got involved in developing alternative types of services in the community and one of them uh, I was involved in was Antenna which was a service for young black men uh, which took a community based approach to helping outcomes. Instead of trying to treat people's mental health problems, the whole focus of that mental health service that was paid for by the National Health Service in the UK was to get people into jobs or get them into, uh, or get them into education, which is revolutionary at that time for a mental health service. So then you search, you start looking at issues beyond the relationships in the family, what's happening in the society. Where does this person come from? What are, what's the situation in the family? All that leads to the concept of community development. So mental health uh, or mental health problems, mental illnesses, just becomes the reason for you to be able to get into their lives. But the whole idea is that it is these social inequalities that have to be set right. 
so in other words it's a view of uh, mental health care firmly based on social justice Before I joined the disability movement, um, every time people talking about mental health, it's always from the psychiatrist's perspective. And in all places, including when we are briefing, the, when we were briefing the journalists, for example, it's always the psychi psychiatrist that um, have the place and do the talk. And we are just a decoration of the room. You know, we are not counted. Our position is not equal. And uh, they are the ones that the actor in our life, the actor and the ruler who decide our life. But when we separate ourselves from this psychiatric uh, approach and position ourselves within the disability movement, our position is very strong. And um, now when people talking about psychosocial disability, they are uh, they, 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 they have to also talk about psychosocial disability from the disability point of view, from the social model of disability, from the CRPD perspective, which is totally different from the psychiatric perspective. So by joining the, the disability movement, we gain a, so much strength and we becoming the actor and the, ru the ruler of our, our life, our activities. And uh, yeah, I mean, it is very, how do you call it, very uh, encouraging, very uh, uh, strength, uh, strengthening and uh, really feels like empowering. The reason being that I've learned so much, very many beautiful ideas, very many different methods of uh, alternative uh, treatment uh, to mental health. So I think it has given me a duty that I have to go back, write a report on everything that I learned, the very, very beautiful ideas that I learned, so that I share with my peers, with organization, so we see how we can uh, cooperate most of those ideas.